Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, we are going to have a fun night tonight. We are going to talk about your food and hidden dangers in food. And hopefully it's going to change your perception of food and your choices that you make. Um, so our food additives and preservatives, are they safe? Now I want you to look at this little cartoon. I love this little cartoon. Um, who's protecting you and your family? And most people think, oh, well, the FDA. That's what we have the FDA for. But I think this little cartoon um, is perfect. The little girl's asking mom, what does the FDA do? And the mother says, well, let me see now, darling. I suppose it's there to protect the doctors and drug companies against scary, angry parents giving them a hard time for having killed their children. <laughs> so, um, the FDA is not our friend. I do it? Okay. Now, sorry about that. Um, I want to talk to you about Harvey Wiley. Harvey Wiley, he's, he's a pioneer. He was a man that was um, before his time. And he is the father of the Pure Food and Drug Act, which is different than the FDA. And he was a chemist, and um, this was the precursor, actually, to the FDA. And what he did is he was a crusader against food additives. And he believed that food additives, preservatives, and different things that um, people were adding to the food were more dangerous than mislabeled drugs or contaminants in, in drugs. And he was against um, benzoic acid, sulfites, saccharin, bleach flour, and a whole host of other things. Now, um, there was a lot of politics going on, and it's a really interesting story about this man. Now, he was constantly butting heads with the Secretary of Agriculture, which was um, Wilson at the time, and President Roosevelt. And they, they were constantly butting heads over this. And what it was, of course, was there was industry that was behind it all. And one of the big companies was Pillsbury. I'm not going to get into the whole story. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. But um, this was around Prohibition time as well. And the companies that were making whiskey were behind it because there was a lot of um, adulterants in the whiskey itself. And the big corporations didn't want this information getting out. Now, um, his... His administration and what he did, Dr. Wiley, it was undercut um, by the Board of Food and Drug Inspection. And um, again, that was somebody that was headed by Pillsbury and they were, they were behind everything. Now, in 1912, Dr. Wiley, he quit. He was very frustrated. There was a huge smear campaign and um, it was President Truman that actually did an investigation and cleared him of, of all charges. But it's kind of the same thing that happens now. Anytime somebody comes up to try to say there's something wrong with um, a, a product, a drug, um, a chemical, anything, um, big pharma comes in or big agriculture comes in and they do a smear campaign. So it's the same thing that's been happening from, from way back when. Now, the government replaced Dr. Wiley with Elmer Nelson, and he was another doctor. And I love this quote. He says, it's holy, this is, this is um, Elmer Nelson, it's wholly unscientific to state that a well-fed body is more able to resist disease than a poorly fed body. My overall opinion is that there hasn't been enough experimentation to prove that dietary deficiencies make one susceptible to disease. I mean, this is, this is insane. But this is what started the FDA to go in the direction of monitoring drugs. And now we have the FDA that we have today. And the, the food industry, as 
as we're going to see, it's, it's not focused on, or the FDA, I should say, is not focused on drugs, I mean on food. Um, now, um, Dr. Wiley was never able to convince um, the government that food additives were, were dangerous. What he did is really interesting. Look, this is a picture of, of Dr. Wiley's lab. And what he had done is he had gotten um, groups of men that volunteered and they had to sign documents um, saying that they were only going to eat this food. And what he did is he would put, um, he had a control group and he had the food with the adulterants in it, which is bleach flour, benzoic acid, and other other chemicals, um, put, put that in there and saw what happened to, to these men. And the sign says, none but the brave can eat here. So these men were getting sick and, and having major, major health issues. And once they started having the health issues, um, Dr. Wiley stopped the, you know, took them out of that group and got them back healthy again, or at least attempted to. Now, this is the things that the FDA is concerned about. Um, there's the Code of Federal Regulations, and what they do is they have set standards for contaminants that can be in your food. And what they have is they have regulatory experts in filth and extraneous materials. Now, what the heck is that? What that is, is they look at length of hairs in your food. They look at um, excrement in your food, like rat feces, things like that. They look at mold. They look at maggots. Um, and they, they look at all this, and then they determine what, what can be there. They, they look at, um, what is it, like bug parts, and how many bug parts you can have in, in a certain part of your, your food. So what I did is I just got, this is off of the FDA website, by the way. And um, this is just one. They have a lot of different food items there. But this is just canned mushrooms, canned or dried mushrooms. And what they've said, it's acceptable. You can have an average of 20 or more maggots um, of any size per 100 grams of mushrooms. Or five or more maggots if they're two millimeters or longer. Um, you can have mites, 75 mites per 100 grams. Um, and your mushrooms can be about 10% decomposed. And this is all acceptable. And if you look down at the bottom, the significance is, is just aesthetic. So, I mean, this is what they spend their time on. What they don't spend their time on is regulating what's going on with our food. Now, I want to get back to Dr. Wiley a little bit and talk about bleached flour. Dr. Wiley was so upset about what was going on with the bleached flour that he even tried to go to the Supreme Court on this issue. And what they do, the companies, they use chlorine oxide. And that is the standard of bleaching flour in, in the country. And um, what it does is it, it bleaches the flour and of course the little mites and other bug particles in there. Um, it, bleaches, it bleaches the flour and it causes a chemical reaction. And the chemical reaction, there's a byproduct, which is alloxin. And now alloxin, the thing with alloxin is this, this is so dangerous and so potent, there's no there's no use for it except for in, in the medical field. And what happens, what they do with aloxin is they give it to, to lab rats and it kills the beta cells in the pancreas. When the beta cells are killed, you can't make insulin. And so what it does is it induces diabetes in lab rats. 
that's the only use for this product. That's how toxic this product is. Now, this does not have to be listed in, on any ingredients because it's not something that's added. It's a byproduct of the bleaching process. Now, what the FDA has said about this is that, well, you know, there's, there's, no, more, there's no more aloxin in, in the flour, so there's no need to worry about it. But this is such a potent chemical and it does such damage to, to your body that why, why is anybody even going to take a chance on, on getting any of this, ingesting any of this in their body? So the thing is, you want to avoid anything that has the bleached flour because there's the potential of having the alloxin in there, which of course, like I said, the only, the only purpose for this is inducing diabetes in lab rats. Now, even more reasons to avoid flour. Um, flour has bromine added in it as a conditioner. Now the problem with this is it affects the thyroid. And what it does is it interferes with the, the iodine. And if you look on the periodic table, there's the, the chemicals on the, on the right side. And, um, and what it does is it knocks out the iodine. And so it's gonna affect the thyroid. So anything that's been conditioned with the bromine, you want to avoid, especially if you have any issues with your thyroid. Um, the other thing about, um, about flour is that it's completely stripped of the nutrients. And so what, what agriculture and, and big companies have done in their infinite wisdom is they said, well, since we've stripped out about 30 vitamins and minerals, let's add a, let's add a few in. Let's add four in. And they call it enriched. And they call it fortified. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, if somebody stole, you know, $20 from you and gave you, you know, back a few dollars, do you think that you're, you're going to feel enriched? No, absolutely not. They've stolen this from you. Plus, one of the things about, about our food is there's so much in it in a fresh vegetable or even in, in, in fresh grains that we don't know. There's so many cofactors in there um, that we don't even know about. So when they strip out the nutrients, they're stripping out all the cofactors, they're stripping out everything. And then they're adding in just a few um, synthetic vitamins. Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is about how they store the grain. And what happens is they store the grain in these big huge bins or silos and before they put the grain in there they treat the inside. They spray it with um, pesticides and they spray it with fungicides because of course they don't want the, the grain to be full of, of fungus and, and other pests. Now they have to take samples out of, of the grain and if they take samples out of the first four inches and there's an unacceptable amount of pests in there, what they do is they fumigate the entire bin. So the whole bin is fumigated. Now here is a picture of one of the, the silos and um, they make sure, they, they build these special for fumigation because it has to be tightly sealed. And after it's been fumigated, it needs to be ventilated for a minimum of two days before it's fit for either human consumption or animal consumption. And I don't know if you can see this chart here at the bottom, but what this says is it's the effect of grain temperature and moisture on stored grain um, on insect and mold development. So this is all things that they're concerned about and they, they have the grain at certain temperatures so that the young insects um, can't reproduce. And, but again, most of these end up getting contaminated with pests because there's just so much 
grain that's going in um, and it's not the most sanitary conditions so you end up with pests and then the whole entire bin has to be fumigated. Now here's another another additive um, or preservative I should say on your fruits and vegetables and it's waxes and there's different kinds of waxes there's petroleum based waxes there's um, there's shellac which is from the lac beetle um, they've got resins and they've got another thing called the modified atmospheric packaging MAP and if you want to check this out um, you can go on YouTube and put in plastic lettuce and what what they're experimenting with and all of this is on the FDA website what they're experimenting with is treating lettuce and and other fruits and vegetables with with this this plastic coating and this woman she got a beautiful you know head of romaine lettuce and she uh, was washing it and she peeled off she didn't know what it was a layer of plastic and I don't know if you can tell from that photo but there is a layer of plastic and what it is is that it's the map the atmospheric packaging now one of the things that is probably so dangerous about this kind of stuff is when they put on the these coatings these waxes number one when you wash your fruits and vegetables this doesn't come off so you're consuming this um, but the other thing is whatever's on that fruit or vegetable like this piece of lettuce for example if you've got any kind of bacteria on there anything on there that's being it's 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 being adhered to to the surface you're not going to be able to wash off any any bacteria and what what is quite possible is when you see these recalls of like spinach and and prepackaged um, produce and they say oh no we need to irradiate everything because there's E. coli um, it's quite likely that this this kind of stuff is causing the problem that you're not being able to wash off your you know any viruses any E. coli any bacteria you're not able to wash all that off and it's being sealed in now the good thing about it um, it keeps your lettuce nice and pretty for a lot longer but um, the, I, I'm just appalled that the FDA would think that this is is a great idea so if you end up having waxes on your on your uh, fruits or vegetables get a potato peeler peel it off don't don't even bother washing it off because the soap and water doesn't get it off now what other additives are there well um, there's thousands and thousands of substances that are added to our foods um, they're for coloring they're for flavor um, and they're for preservatives now you've got food dyes most of the food dyes are petroleum based you don't want anything petroleum based in your body you want things that are organic based but most of them are petroleum based now you can have a beautiful red food coloring made from carmine and it is made from this beetle so look look for for the red food coloring and it's likely that your red food coloring is coming from from this beetle uh, I'm going to be talking in a couple of weeks and we're going to talk about um, products that you put on your body you can look at lotions and you can look at makeup and they also have this kind of coloring that's that's being used okay here's here's another product um, propylene glycol now it's a non-toxic antifreeze so therefore it's good <laughs> um, this is a solvent that is used for food coloring and flavoring um, it's used in pharmaceuticals so 
want to be very careful with what kind of, of um, medications that you're taking. Um, it's made for inject injectables, it's made for um, topical treatments. One of the, the things about this um, chemical is that they put it in, in body care products to help absorb. And so it pushes whatever, whatever other chemicals or items are in, the ingredients are in the, the product, pushes it deeper into your skin. Um, and what it does is it holds in moisture in your food. So it makes your, your Twinkies nice and squishy and, and, and moist. Um, so it's also in toothpaste and it's in mouthwash, it's in hair care products, it's in tobacco. And they use these products for, for or they use this chemical in so many different products that we use in our, our home. Now, benzoic acid. This is one of the items, it's a preservative. This is one of the items that um, Dr. Wiley, way back when, did his test and found that these men were having detrimental health um, consequences by consuming this. But here we are still in, you know, 2012 and we're still putting this into our food. Now the, the, the men that signed up for Dr. Wiley's program, they were called the Death Squad. And it was appropriately named. They were becoming sick and ill by by having consuming the benzoic acid. However, it's okay because um, it inhibits the growth of mold and yeast in some bacteria. So the FDA is making um, big agriculture and the big companies happy because we're able to prolong the shelf life. So again, you can see the concern for the FDA is not us as consumers. It's for, for big agriculture, it's for the big corporations, but it's not for us. Um, this is also used in acidic foods and, acidic foods and um, beverages for pickles, um, soft drinks. Another thing about pickles is that they use yellow food coloring, especially like in Vlasic pickles, so that makes it look fresher. And what do, what do we tend to look for? you know, something that's got the, the beautiful, fresh looking colors. Well, most of those are because of food coloring and food additives. So those aren't the, the items that you want to be going for. You want to start looking at, at your food with a different criteria. Um, and the other thing about benzoic acid is that it can react with ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, and it can cause small amounts of benzene, which of course we know is carcinogenic. Now this is one of my favorites. This is a natural flavor. Now um, the beaver is natural. He exists in nature. Um, but the beaver has an anal gland. And what happens it's the, it's the castor sac, which is it's the anal gland, and they combine that with the, the beaver's urine. And what they use it for is um, in processed foods for flavoring. And it's really, really good for vanilla flavor and strawberry and um, raspberry flavor. And the reason that they can get away with calling it natural flavoring is because it's from the beaver. It's not something that's synthetic. Now, um, if you want, there's a really interesting 2020 segment. You can look it up, um, and it's called The Flavorist. And it talks about this. And what, what industry is doing is they're making things taste more. Like if you get strawberry flavored um, chewing gum or strawberry flavored ice cream, they want it to taste more, like explode in your mouth for a few reasons. One, it's, it's addicting, um, but then your, your taste buds get accustomed to this 
huge burst of flavor and you're not you're not gonna want to go for a regular strawberry because it's not gonna have that huge burst so uh, what they do though is they use they use the the anal beaver gland because it's natural um, okay more additives and preservatives how many people have heard of meat glue okay meat glue is made from blood and plasma of, of different animals, pigs and different animals. And what meat glue does is um, it binds together protein molecules. And so if you've got some meat scraps and you're a butcher and you've got meat scraps, you just get the meat glue, you pour it on, you mix it all up together, you, you roll it all up and you put it in the, the refrigerator for a while pull it out, you cut, and it can look like a beautiful cut of filet mignon. And it's not, and you can't tell. And they're getting so good at this that the butchers can't tell. They're using this with beef, they're using it with chicken, they're using it with fish, and, and you don't know. So if you're gonna be buying animal products, you want to make sure that you get dairy. I mean <laughs> dairy. You want to make sure you want to make sure that you get organic and then grass fed. But because you can't be using meat glue if you're getting the organic. Um, now everyone's heard of pink slime. This is another thing that that hit the news and um, it's also known as Soylent Pink and originally it was used in pet food and cooking oils and then they decided oh well, let's sell it to McDonald's and um, you know let's give it to our children and this is um, ex ex exposed to ammonia gas and um, that kills the bacteria so 70 percent of ground beef sold in our supermarkets was contaminated and mixed with the pink slime so another thing that they're doing to our food we don't know about it we think that we're going out there purchasing fresh food and nourishing our our families and we're being slowly poisoned another thing is genetically modified foods which election coming up go out there and vote if you don't vote for anything else vote yes on 37 which is um, the labeling um, of genetically modified foods and genetically modified foods right now um, most of the packaged foods have genetically modified ingredients in them most packaged foods have corn um, most of them have have um, like soy with soy oil um, soybean oil things like that so you want to make sure that you purchase organic and you want to make sure that you vote on this proposition so that we can um, get get labeling on on the packages so that we know that what we're buying now another thing is fake fat and what they're doing is they're they're manipulating the um, the oils and they're putting in the omega-6 rich oils which are really unhealthy for you what everybody needs a a, a proper balance of the omega-3s to the omega-6s however um, what's happening is everybody's being inundated by the omega-6s and people aren't getting the omega-3s that they need and so there's omega-6 overload which causes inflammation and it causes bad moods it causes blood clots there's a whole host of, of um, ill effects that you have when you consume the omega-6s and when you go out and you buy your packaged foods and you get your chips and, and things like that, it's going to be made with the omega-6 oils. So just another reason to not buy the packaged foods. Now, there's a lot of symptoms that you can have 
when you're consuming these, these toxins. And you may not even know it or associate um, your symptoms with what you're consuming. But your skin, um, your skin is one of the, the pathways of elimination. And so your skin can, can have symptoms. You can get um, swelling and you can get flushing and you can get itching and, and hives and different symptoms like that. Your gastrointestinal, all these things are going to throw off your digestion. Um, your respiratory, it can cause um, allergic type reactions. Um, your um, aches and pains and in your joints and your muscles. Um, neurological conditions can, can develop. Um, there's a lot of research out there with um, looking at what you consume um, and behavior and it can be so extreme that it ends up causing criminal behavior because your brain is is not getting the nourishment it needs and your brain is is inflamed and you end up doing things that if you had the proper nutrition that you wouldn't normally do and it can also cause problems with your heart and your circulation. So what do you do? Um, this is where you vote with your pocketbook. So number one, just make sure that you get organic. Um, I got an email today from a friend of mine that's always giving me a hard time about organic and, and trying to say, well, there's a study that says that organic isn't um, any different than conventional as far as nutritional values. And my response was, I don't really care. I'm just really grossed out that they're using petroleum-based fertilizers and, and sludge and, and things as fertilizers. And I don't like the, the preservatives that they put in the food. And I, there's a whole host of things that I just don't want to consume. So to me, that argument, I take the wind out of it because I look at all the other ill effects that come along with eating foods that are not organic. Um, the next thing is purchasing just like fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables. Um, you don't want to eat packaged foods because even though you go organic, you can get organic junk food, um, you know, which is better than non-organic junk food, but still yet it's junk food. What you really want to do is get wise about your food choices and think about how that's going to impact your body. So support your local farmers. I think it's really important to support the local farmer, especially when big agriculture is coming in and, um, and they're not treating the land properly. Um, it's not being farmed in a sustainable fashion. And the local farmers, they understand um, how to farm sustainably. And you're going to have um, food that's just freshly picked. It's, it's going to be, you know, almost, you know, ripe or ripe when, when you get it. And it's just going to be much better for you. And then you want to educate yourself and you want to educate others. And then what happens if you experience adverse effects? What you want to do is detoxify. And this should actually be a way of life. You want to drink plenty of fresh water. And in a couple weeks, Dr. Bergman's going to be giving a talk about water. Um, so you're going to learn a lot. You're not going to want to miss that one because there's a lot to know about water but you want to start drinking a lot of really fresh, um, clean water. The other thing that you can do is you can do cleanses. There's the Master Cleanse, which is um, lemon juice, cayenne pepper, and um, grade B maple syrup. And this is one that has been around for, for decades. And um, I actually cured my allergies using the, the Master Cleanse. Um, this is a good one. Vitrotox, um, colonics, 
You can go on vegetable juicing, and that's another good way to, to detox. Um, the far infrared sauna is excellent. Um, exercising, rebounding. And what you want to look at is you want to look at the pathways of elimination. So you've got um, your skin. You can do the, the lymph brushing. You get the, the dry skin brush and you brush um, towards your, your heart and that helps stimulate the lymph. Um, the far infrared sauna, which is going to get you to sweat, which is a pathway of elimination. The uh, Vitrotox and the colonics is going to help with your digestion. Um, the exercising. Get plenty of sunshine. Um, when you get your sunshine, make sure you do not put toxic um, sunscreens on. Your, your body actually needs the sun. You don't need to be out there for, for hours on end. You can be out there for 20 minutes or so at a time. You don't want to um, damage your skin and, and go out there and get sunburn. Um, but you don't want to cause more injury by putting on sunscreens that are toxic. Deep breathing exercises, because that also stimulates your lymph. And your lungs are another pathway of elimination. You eliminate toxins through, through your breath. Another thing to do is grounding. Get outside, walk on grass uh, with your bare feet, walk in the sand. Um, it's going to be good exercise. You're probably going to do it in the day so you get your sunlight. Um, and you're going to get grounded to the earth. And there's scientific studies that show how beneficial grounding is. They have shown people that have um, blood and their blood is, is stuck together and it's not free flowing and they go and they get grounded and they come back and they have their blood analyzed again and it's broken apart and it's flowing the way, the way it should be. The next thing is you want to supplement with vitamins and minerals and enzymes. And it's really important because number one, our bodies have been compromised because we've been eating all of this junk and we don't, we don't know it. In an ideal world, you'd get all of what you need from your food, but we don't live in that ideal world. Um, so it's really important to get the, the proper supplementation and get the probiotics so that your, your intestines can, can take care of any kind of um, bacteria and it can produce the, the vitamin B12. And um, I've got two analyses that um, if you email me, I can um, send you a link and you can do them online um, and we can talk about that. Just email me. But it's really important to get the proper supplementation um, to help your body to get back on the right track and to heal itself because your body is designed to heal itself. So thank you.